God's going to bless you. Not because you gave, just because it's right to do. Amen. We thank God for all of you. And at this particular time, we're going to move a little further with our service. And we're going to have our uh, brothers are going to give us a selection on this morning. Greet them for God bless you. God bless
after Lord give us this day.
then that's how you claim your power as a man. The world will tell you one thing about your power. The Word of God and the Holy Spirit will tell you something else. And whenever you get your understanding of power from the world, you will end up defeated, deflated, and dead. Come on. But when you get your power from the world, can sickness, can a recession, can a depression, can anything take it from you? Come on. So the first one was what? In Genesis 2, 7. What? And the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the earth, breathed the breath into his nostrils, and he became a living soul. Yes. What was the point? Who's the man? The man is preceded by God, uh -huh. produced by God, and powered by God. Yes. Now, today, Genesis 15, 2, 15, and 2, 18. Uh -huh. Then the Lord God took the man, put him in the garden of Eden yes. to dress it and keep it. Uh -huh. All right. 15. 18. Okay. Then the Lord God said it is not good mm -hmm. that the man be alone. Uh -huh. I will make him and help me. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yes, yes. Who's the man? <laughs> Part two. All right. All right. Part two. All right. And here are the three points. The man to the purpose that you had in this moment. And God, I stand right now believing and claiming that I am standing here not just because a bishop or a people invited me, but God, you ordained this moment and you said that I will be your vessel for your purpose. So God, I surrender all that I am unto you. Right now, God, you magnify your presence through me and you sanctify this vessel and you sanctify us that we might operate in your truth and receive your truth with joy and then act on it faithfully. God, we're yours. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Who's the man? Part two. We learned on Thursday that no matter what you are, you are because God is. That's right. hmm? Because it said, and the Lord God produced. So that you are, you proceed from the power of God. And when you don't understand God, when you don't honor God, you are not honoring your true manhood because your man. Whitney is acting as a primary example of a gifted woman on the way 
into an anointing who instead of moving into anointing de de decreased to a talent. Come on. There you go.
God. There are seasons. There have been times and there have been moments. No, I pastor y'all. And can I make it plain to you? Yeah. That sometimes when I'm getting ready to share the word, that somebody will come in with an issue that will deflect, deflect my spirit. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Now see, I know when you like to act like we operate in the Holy Ghost and we're spiritual all the time. But if you're standing in your pulpit ready to preach or you're, you're ready to minister to somebody, God a program, even when you're ready to pray and you got to look over at somebody who's been trying to cut your throat for the past two weeks and that spirit gets down in you say, boy, I would really guess what? That will hinder and annoy you. Experience the anointing because there's so much stuff that yes. distracts you. You realize that God, even when God lifts you, the higher God lifts you, the more comes upon you, and it increases the possibility without sober vigilance, focus, and dedication that the very God that took you may no longer be the focus of your attention. And I pray, God. That you will never take me where my devotion and my character can't keep me. For some of you young ministers, you're in a desperate attempt to get to another place. You may be trying to get to your own destruction. Because you're trying to get there by your ego and not by the Holy Ghost. Someone asked me, thank you, God, hallelujah. Thank you. They asked me about what well, you you someone just mentioned you were talking about the power. What do you mean? What, what help me, help me? Here's the key. I'm get the Holy Ghost did not come on the day of Pentecost. The Holy Ghost is eternal. The Holy Ghost operated in creation. when we positioned ourselves to receive what was eternally available to us. Uh, go to 
to any automotive store and you can buy a little brush. It's a little cap with a wire brush and it's got another brush up inside of it that you can slide down in between the connector and the other one you can put on, come on, on in between the clamp and the other one you can put on the connector and remove your corrosion. In the old days, some of y'all who got a little age, we used to just take Coca-Cola. <laughs> That's why your 
principle of justification precedes your what? Sanctification. Sanctification. And that's why your soteriology precedes your pneumatology. See, before you can have pneuma, what? Pneum that's the Greek word for what? Breath or air. Pneuma. Hebrew, ruach. He breathes up. When God, pneuma is your breath. So if something is pneumatically driven, you have a pneumatic tool, what? It's driven by compressed air. Come on. Pneumatology is the study of the breath of the church. <laughs> and if you're not breathing, huh? You are in rep respiratory arrest. And God gave the church CPR. Christ provided resuscitation.
He puts you in, in, a, in a nasty place, a broken place. Guess what? The word garden there in Garden of Eden, guess what it means in other translations? Paradise. I put you in paradise. And you know what paradise means? It means an enclosed place where you're secure, protected, and will not be harmed. Oh, come on. Guess what he said? When I put you somewhere, the hell hound might come after you, but I got a fence around you and touch not my anointing. I will take care of you. I will put you in a place to fail. I don't put you somewhere to be defeated. I put you there in a garden and I put you there to grow. And maybe your life is shriveling and you lack the joy and peace because you've listened to everybody else, but you just haven't said, God, put me. God, wherever you place me, I know that's my God. And you're going to do stuff that say can't be done. Come on, there's some things going to happen here that other folk for the past 50 years been trying to do it, and they said it'll never happen. But the reason it didn't happen because the person there wasn't where God put them. Oh, but I'm putting you here, and if you go there because I put you, it does not yet appear what you shall be. Come on, I have not seen here and not heard either as in the heart of man the things that I've prepared. start going where God wants you to go, sometimes your own family will beat you up. I know. And God put him where? In a car. Yes. I pastor a rural congregation, y'all. Come on. Beaver down for you. Probably had about 60 or 80 members. God has blessed us. We have close to 500 now. God has blessed the ministry. But I don't know how many people told me, you need to leave there, man. With your gifts, you ought to do this, and you ought to be here. You ought to be there. You ought to be here. But every time I got on my knees and prayed to God, God said, this is where I put you. Amen. And from that little corner in Bebedan, God has let me go around the world and minister and bless. If I would have gone somewhere else, I would have been cutting off my own blessing because I would have let somebody else put me rather than God. God! Put it in a garden. What a place of protection and a place of flourishing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he says, I put you here to do what? To dress it and keep it. Yes. I move from my putting to my purposing. Yes. All right. All right. You don't have to read 40 books to find your purpose. <laughs> read one verse in the Bible. <laughs> your purpose is to enter the earth In the beginning, when Jesus made the first primal pair, he said, what? Be fruitful and multiply. Regrettably, we think that refers only to procreation. That's right. Amen. But fruitfulness is imaging God and releasing the life principle in you such that life comes where there appears to be death. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, when the earth was void and without form, and God stepped into nowhere, out of, out of nowhere, and made somewhere, and God, he breathed his breath of life into it. When you step into the garden and God gives you position and promise and possibility, what you got to do is do just what God did. It looks like it's nothing. It looks like it's void. But when I get through, yeah. let it be. Come on. I will breathe the breath of life into this thing and it will flourish. That's what he just told you. Wherever I put you, you act like I act. And you just release the spirit in you and that spirit will bring forth life. I want you to be fruitful and multiply. I don't want you just to have babies. I want you to enter a drug Yes, it. Yes. 
Yeah. You cultivate it and nourish it yeah. such that life comes where other people saw no life. Right. Be fruitful. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And you looking for somewhere else to do your thing and you haven't even been fruitful where y'all are. You know, I, as you said, but think certain things I love. If I would have made another career decision in my life, if God had not tugged me this way, I'd probably been a doctor, a scientist, because I love to read science. It fascinates me. Because every time I read science, I come to one conclusion. There must be a God. So, come on. But do you realize they were, I was listening to the National Geographic channel one time and they were showing a desert and the desert was completely barren, it was dry. And the narrator set you up by saying, that, see there is no life here, it is dry, it is dead. No life can come from this place. There is no life in the desert. But then every now and then it rains in the desert. And when it rained, they did time lapse photography and within hours what happened? Flowers began to bloom. And then the narrator said, you thought it was dead, but I got you. <laughs> because buried in the dirt of the desert and the searing heat of the desert are encapsulated seeds yes, waiting yes, for yes. one raindrop. Right. Why don't you live your life to be a raindrop in somebody's desert? Oh,
that she would share the shield and I would have the shield. And we would make sure there was no space in between the shield so that one of us could come under attack. Come on. So guess what? I'm covering her. She's covering me. But I'm telling her, baby, you don't have to wonder where your man is. If any enemy comes against this house, if anything wants to destroy our relationship, if anything tries to disrupt what God designed for us, when you look for me, I'll be at the point. I will take the lead to make sure. And before I let you take something, I'll take it. But guess what? If we cover a big color, no weapon formed against us will prosper. And I don't want to be over you, but I want to walk with you. And you can have the assurance I'm your point man. in the great hall and they were all inside 
behavior is this? How do you put an end to this lower level bodily drowning? And then Bishop Tutu said, oh, you don't understand. That dance is the toy toy. It is the dance of joy. And he said, sir, you see Nelson? They used to call him prisoner. Now they call him Mr. President. You see me? They used to call me black boy. 